Hey guys, and welcome to another Q&A video. It has been a long time since I've done a Q&A video. I used to wait for like the 5,000 mark in my subscribers, but I obviously haven't been gaining any new subscribers, and I've actually been losing some ever since I... I'm losing a lot ever since I stopped posting like hair videos and makeup videos and told people to leave if that was all they cared about. I mean, I did tell them to leave, and they did. Um, so... I just decided to do a Q&A because I felt like it, and um, yeah, I don't know, it's been a great year for me, and I've been loving life, and people can tell, and a lot of people have been asking me to do another Q&A, so here I am, doing another Q&A, it's very warm in here. What's your favorite tattoo you've done this year? I've done a lot of awesome tattoos this year, but the problem is, the work that I do, it's like ongoing work, I do big tattoos. So, anything I started this year probably wasn't finished this year. But, I did finish a couple of tattoos this year that I am super proud of. Um, I'll put some pictures here. <laughs> Pretty much, babes. I love doing faces, color, war paint, all about that shit. Um, a moment that went bad, but you wouldn't change or regret. The band. Any moment that went bad in my life, I would not change because... You know, everything that happened got me to where I am now, and I am proud of who I am now, therefore I don't regret anything that's happened. I mean, obviously I regret when I used to be a horrible human being. You know, I used to be racist, I used to be sexist, I used to be a bigot, but that's because I was raised to be that way through my biological father. And I made the conscious decision to stop being that person, and I made the conscious effort to stop being that person. And now I'm a better person, and I made me this way, so no matter how horrible I used to be, I can look back on that person now and not writhe in pain because I know I'm not that person anymore. Um, so, those are some big ass snowflakes. It's snowing, but it's not even cold. And there's no snow on the ground because it's melting the moment it hits the ground. Okay, anyway. Um... Sorry, those two questions were from Becca L. Sampson. Moma Butterfly 420 says, I watched the video, but you didn't say who are your celebrity crushes. You are one of mine. Um, right now, I am just crushing on the entire entity that is BTS. I understand it now. Before, when I didn't know, like, BTS, and I just kept hearing about BTS, I kind of assumed, like, oh, they're probably overrated. And then I started getting into it, and, like, I get it. I understand now why they are, like, the biggest group in the world. I fucking get it. And I am down. I am hopping on that army train. Lexi Scissorhands says, have you ever had a pregnancy scare? Yes, which is hilarious because I'm infertile. And by pregnancy scare, I just mean, like, I had sex and then, you know, it started creeping in my head, like, Am I pregnant? And I took a pregnancy test and it was like, Nah, bitch, you got no eggs! So... I feel like the moment you have a vagina and you feel like something's being weird, you're just like, Oh my god, I'm pregnant. So, I have had pregnancy scares, but I am infertile. I'm gonna change my battery because it's dying. Jasmine Minhe says, How did you get started writing music? Um, I just did. So I've been playing music my whole life. I started learning piano when I was about three or four. And then I picked up violin when I was about six. And then I started learning guitar when I was about nine. And I started learning guitar because I'd always wanted to because I thought it was cool. And then Avril Lavigne happened and I was like, whoa! So I traded piano for guitar because I wasn't allowed to quit an instrument, but I was like, what if I trade? So I traded piano for guitar, and then I started playing guitar, and because I've always sang, now that I had, like, guitar and vi fucking guitar and voice, and I could do them at the same time, I started writing songs in the fourth grade. And I had this little book where I wrote all of my lyrics, and, like, I had the chords to the songs, and I specifically told my mom and, like, my family, like, don't read my songs, because I was, like, really insecure or something about them. But... I wrote a song about my mom, and I think that she had seen, like, the word mom in the book, like, passing by. So, of course, out of curiosity, she read my songbook, and I found out, and I flipped my shit, as, you know, 
dramatic fourth grader that I was, and I ripped out the pages and threw them into the fire. Like, I threw them into a fire. So, those songs are long gone. And then, I didn't really write any more songs for a couple years, I was just, you know, being a kid and whatever. And then, I started writing songs again when I was about 13. So the first couple songs I wrote, I was about nine, and then I didn't really do anything. And then it was in Singapore. I have the timestamp on my computer. The first, like, song I ever wrote is called Without You. It's on the first album of Bedroom Records. I wrote Without You for my sister, about her crush. And then the first song I ever wrote for me is called Runaways. And that song is also on Bedroom Records. And Runaways is about running away from home. Obviously, that was what I wanted to do. But in the song Runaways, it's a story about, um, I guess, a girl and a guy running away together. And like, that was my dream. I wanted to have someone that I could run away with, but I had no friends. Or at least, you know, no one I actually really cared about and that cared about me in return. So, I did not run away. <laughs> so that was how I got started. I just, I just felt like it. Um, I had this thing as a kid, even now actually, if I see someone else doing something, I'm like, I can do it. I don't really have that complex of like, oh, I couldn't do that, apart from like, you know, maths, because... Um, but, I was a kid and I saw, you know, Avril Lavigne being Avril Lavigne, and I saw other, you know, musicians being musicians, and I assumed that they wrote their own music. Fun fact, a lot of them don't. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna write my own songs, and then I did. So I'm glad I had that thing where I just kind of, you know, I thought the best of everyone, you know? When you saw a singer, I kind of assumed, like, I thought that Britney Spears wrote all her own music. <laughs> um, but I'm glad I thought that at that time, because I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna write my own music, and then I did, and haven't stopped. Um, Shakers21 says, are you interested in vegan activism at all? I participated in my first Cube of Truth and it was great. I feel like you have the right attitude to show some people some real shit. Um, yeah, I'd be down. I've been to a couple of the marches in Vancouver, the March for Animal Rights that happens every year. Um, but the problem is most marches and shit happen on weekends and I'm always working on weekends because that's when people get tattooed. So. I can't really get out for much of those. Also, I rarely leave my house. I'm a Taurus bitch says, have you ever had henna art on your body or have you done it on anyone? And if now, if not, what do you think of it? Um, I've had henna art, but not in the traditional henna style. Like, you know, that kind of thing where you go on holiday and you're young and you're like, oh, I want a fake tattoo. And they just like give you a tribal piece of shit in henna. I've had that, but I've never actually had the art of henna, because I've never... Actually, I have been to an Indian wedding. I went to an Indian wedding in India, but it wasn't like a like a high-key, like, lit Indian wedding. It was like a super chill, small Indian wedding. So I've never really had a reason to do it. I wouldn't do it unless I was attending, you know, if I was invited by people of that culture to do it. Um, will you add the rest of your discography on iTunes? I will be, but the reason why I'm holding off on it is because in order for me to post any music on iTunes or Spotify or whatever, I need to pay. And it's like 50 bucks per album. And I have a lot of albums! So... You know, I'm waiting until I have enough money to do that. And I need to pay every year in order to have it up there. So, you know, it's kind of like, is it even fucking worth it? Why do I write so many songs? Fuck my life. Um, Nyx Vixen says, I admit I love Kurt's backing vocals on He Makes Me Feel. I know being in a band isn't healthy for you, but have you ever considered having someone sing backing vocals on any of your songs? I love your songs with or without backup singers because you're fucking amazing. Thank you. Um, I have thought about it, and the more I think about it, the more I'm like, fuck no, because when I do everything myself, it is easy and it is clean, as in, it doesn't get messy. You know, when you do everything yourself, you don't have to worry about other people's feelings 
or compensation, you know? If I record a song and I have someone do backup vocals on it and then I sell like a lot of copies of that song, I need to work out payment or if I just, you know, pay them in one go at the beginning, like we have to work that out, I just, I just can't be fucking bothered. Also, you know, the moment I have to work with someone else, I have to like wait on them and I hate waiting for people. Um, I did have my friend Devo play bass on the previous Empire, on the previous Empire, on the previous album, Empire, um, and that was fun. He's gonna be playing bass on this album as well, but yet again, I have to wait. The album has been pretty much finished, all I'm waiting for is bass, but he's been busy, so I've just been waiting. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm adding bass on this album, I would have released it already. But I'm adding bass, so it's not going to be done until early 2019, and that's annoying. So, yeah, I'm going to keep as little people involved as possible. Also, I had my previous album mastered by a friend, and you would think that having me, a bassist, and a person mastering it, you'd think that having multiple people listening to the album before its release, we would catch, you know, like, oh, the vocals should, should be louder, but we didn't. Personally, now, when I listen to Empire, I think it sounds like fucking dog shit. And the fact that there was more people involved in it than my previous albums, and it sounds almost worse, I'm like, why? No. Fuck you. So, yeah. I like, I like working alone. Billie Jean 1999 says, Would you get a cat? I would if it didn't have legs. And by that, I mean I love cats, but it would knock over all of my shit. And I have a lot of shit that can be knocked over, and, you know, I'm just, just like instruments, plants, art shit, tattoo gear, I'm like, I can't, I can't fucking do that. So, if I had a cat that just like couldn't hop onto things, sure, I would adopt a three-legged cat. No, that could still hop on things. I would adopt a one-legged cat. <laughs> I love cats. So, whenever I'm somewhere that has a cat, I get my cat fixed by, like, smothering it. But I don't think I personally can have a cat. Weirdos for Life says, Random question. Since you're a Harry Potter fan, would you ever consider going to the Universal Studios in California to go on the Hogwarts ride? Duh. <laughs> Zombie Landy says, Would you consider doing covers again slash collabing with someone with music? Um, I mean, I guess I'm col collabing with my bassist, but I don't know, if it happened naturally and easily and just, it, you know, it was fun, yes, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it because usually it's not fun for me. Covers, maybe, but I just haven't had time this year to do any because I've been so busy and I'm working non-stop until I go to the Philippines because I'm going to the Philippines for a whole month and I know that I'm not going to be able to work while I'm there so I'm, you know, just trying to get everything done I'm trying to release the next album before I go because if I don't, I'm gonna fucking hate myself and I won't be able to enjoy the holiday so Devo, get your fucking shit together, let's record some fucking bass! I love you, thank you for working with me I'm sorry I'm such an asshole sometimes, let's get it done! So, yeah. In regards to, like, payment with Devo, we pretty much do just, like, bass and tattoos. Like, I tattoo him, he plays bass, it's great. Um, how would you rate your year on a 1 to 10 scale and why? I'd say it was a 10. I did everything that I wanted to do this year. I got rid of a lot of people that I sh had to get rid of this year. Um, there were a lot of hardships, but I got through all of them. Like, there is nothing that I'm currently, like, battling right now. And we're at, you know, the very end of the year. I battled a lot of stuff through this year, but I won those battles. So I'd say this year was a 10. Last year, 2017, that was like a fucking one. <laughs> um, Bring Me the Bleach says, Do you ever regret being vegan and has it ever affected any friendships or relationships in your life? I have never regretted being vegan. And... No, it hasn't affected any friendships or relationships. And if it did, those people didn't matter anyway. 
Um, what is your favorite tattoo? Pretty much any tattoo I've done on myself, I'm a big fan of. Because I'm like that. Um, I really like this one. No, yeah. That one. Sorry, I'm not wearing pants. Don't freak out. It's just underwear. You've all seen it before. That one on my shin. Um, also, this one on my thigh. This is a painting by my favorite artist, Susan Sidon Boulay. That was the first color tattoo I ever did, and I did it on myself, and it hurt like a fucking biatch. Um, I've also started another tattoo on myself, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that one too. Especially because it's in a really hard place to reach. And it hurts like a fucking biatch. So yeah, I'm still working on that one. I'm a big fan of my own work because I am an asshole. Um, what is your favorite meal ever? Chili Pepper House is a restaurant that's just, like, just down the block from me. And my favorite meal is going to Chili Pepper House and getting their veggie fried rice, their spicy garlic green beans, their sweet and sour tofu, and their sweet and sour veggies. Four dishes, it's only $38, and it lasts me like two to three days. If I ordered that amount of food from anywhere else in Vancouver, it would be at least $60. So, yeah. That's pretty much all I eat. If you follow me on Instagram, I am always <laughs> just eating that. Um, I try going grocery shopping every now and then, and then my groceries just go off. Like, it's not even worth it for me to go grocery shopping. If anyone's been wondering why I haven't been making cooking videos, it's because I don't cook. I eat chili pepper house. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, um, have you ever thought about getting another pet? I mean, I've thought about a one-legged cat. <laughs> but other than that, I'm, I'm good. You know, maybe one day I'll adopt 50 dogs, but for now, I am good. P.S. Love you a shit ton. Thank you. Um, Alex in Wonderland 21 says, Naomi, you've been a huge inspiration to me for years now with learning to love my body and who I am. Do you have any advice for being away from your own family? Uh, from being away from your family and getting started on your own. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm really awkward with saying thank you in case you haven't noticed. These comments do really mean the world to me. I'm just like weird at showing it because I wasn't allowed to, allowed to talk about my feelings as a child. Um, advice for being away. See, the problem is I can't give people advice on how to deal with being away from your family because with my upbringing of moving from country to country, I always knew I was going to be away. I just assumed that was life, right? Because I grew up with my parents who were away from their parents. I kind of assumed you grow up, you leave, you move. That's normal for me. So when I left it, I like living in Vancouver. And I, you know, my mom loves living in Singapore. And I love that she lives in Singapore because it means I can visit Singapore. I love Singapore, and I love my mom, so it's nice that, like, they're both there. Uh, my sister still lives in Singapore, but she is planning on moving, I'm not sure where, but I'm excited by that because it means there's somewhere else for me to visit. I don't know, I just, I grew up moving from country to country, it wasn't weird for me to be away from my family. And you know, we have the internet, it's not like we don't get to talk to each other, right? We can talk to each other every single fucking day if we want to. We don't. You know, we have a group chat that we talk in every now and then, but I don't know, this is this is my normal. My normal is being away from my family. So I can't help you there. And with the whole getting started on your own, are you talking about like kids and shit? Because I can't help you with that either. Um, but if you're talking about like friends that feel like family, um, I also can't help you there because I'm antisocial as fuck. <laughs> Um, my recommendation is, you know, just building yourself a nice little bubble and staying in it. I do have friends that I, like, that are close to me. I have, you know, a smaller 
it's not even a circle of friends. We don't hang out with each other. I just like have friends that have their own friend groups and I just hang out with those people individually. Pretty much all of my friends, my like my close friends, I have met through some kind of work. Um, like some of my close friends started off as clients, as tattoo clients. Some of my close friends I met on acting jobs. Some of my close friends, you know, were other tattoo artists. Yeah, I got some close friends I met through music. I was just trying to think about I was like, well, I'm not friends with my old bandmates. Um, but yeah. Like, my friends Mark and Caroline, who are my dog's godparents now, um, I met them through music. So yeah, I don't know, just do what you love, and then you'll end up meeting people that are right for you. But, you know, be picky. Don't let in toxic people. Oh god, how do I say this? Chelsea Ruiz. Zero, zero. What was it like filming the stain and run music videos and what were your favorite moments? Um, fun. I like shooting videos. I, I highly enjoy getting things done and being productive. Um, yeah, I, I shot both of those with my friend Nat, who I met through my friend Romeo, who I met through an acting audition. Um, yeah, so we shot both of those. Nat and I work well together because I know what I'm- I, I know what I want, and Nat is willing to just, like, do that. I feel like if I was shooting somebody else's music video and they asked me to do something, I'd be like, No, it's gonna look better like this! I'm very stubborn, um, and Nat isn't, and that's why we work. <laughs> um, I- I guess I don't really get along with stubborn people. That's why I don't get along with my biological father. We're the same, we just have different opinions, and that's why we clash so much, because we are both so unwilling to compromise. Um, favorite moments? Um, I liked sitting on my car for stain, and now there's a permanent dent in the roof of my car, because apparently my ass is so fucking heavy. Um, <laughs> my cousin came over, and I could hear her and her boyfriend outside laughing at my car, and when they approached the door, they were like, what the fuck happened to your car? Because, like, the bumper is held on with duct tape and stuff. I was like, oh, people like to hit my car. And they were like, who hit the roof? <laughs> my ass did. Luna Park says, will you make classic videos of you making the vocal part of your songs? Or will there be only music videos from now on? I'm waiting for the rest of the album to be on YouTube, and I know you were working on a new one. Um, I will not be making those videos because I don't film myself when I do the vocals now. Before, I would just film myself as I did the vocals, and then I would be pretty much... Like, there was a lot of pressure to, you know, do the videos and the recordings at the same time, and it was just too much. Now, I can just be chill and, you know, look like a complete mess and record vocals. Because also, before, I would have to film all the videos in one go, or at least I would, you know, do my best to do that, because I only like wearing makeup, you know... I only like, fuck, because I only put makeup on for those videos, and I don't really like wearing makeup, so if I'm gonna wear makeup, then I wanna get all the videos done in one go, and it was just too much pressure. Whereas now, I can just record vocals whenever I feel like it, and I don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, I don't know, just listen to the music on Spotify or iTunes or whatever. Nobody really watched those videos anyway. Like. I mean, there was a couple thousand views on them, but there wasn't that many views. And I feel like it was starting to just, like, clog up my YouTube. So, I mean, I could make videos where I'm pretending to sing them, but then it's just gonna be lip singing, which is pretty much just a music video. So I think I'm just gonna make, like, simple music videos for a couple of the songs from now on. I just don't have the time or can be fuckedness to make those videos now. Because I'm so busy, I'm doing so much stuff. Like, it's easier for me to just work on the album as the album. And then once that's done, I can make videos. Doing it at the same time, it's just, it's a fucking nightmare. So, no. I'm just gonna do the albums, release those. I might post, like, a full album on YouTube. But at this point, I, like, vomit in my mouth when I hear Empire. So I don't even want to revisit that. Like, we shot a music video for Guilty of You. 
but I'm so annoyed by how the song sounds, I don't even want to post it. Because I agree with everyone, the vocals are too quiet. And I went back and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna boost the vocals a little bit and then repost it. But then I was like, the fucking EQ is off. So then I started doing the EQ for the vocals and the guitars. And then I was like, fucking everything is off. And then I started mixing the whole album all over again. And it's not even like a peaceful album. Empire is a very angry album. And it's like a very, you know, that album is the result of two years, like the two worst years of my life. Those songs on Empire were what got me through the two worst years of my life. And it was how, you know, I survived and then I recorded the album and I released it and I'm done. And so going back and trying to remix that and having to like listen to those songs over and over and over, I'm like, I can't be fucked with this. I don't want to revisit this. I know it sounds like dog shit and I can't stand listening to it, but like maybe in a couple years, or even just in a couple months, maybe I'll do it again. But right now I'm working on the next album, which is, you know, Soelu is the album that happened throughout the most peaceful year of my life versus the worst two years of my life. So like, why would I work on the worst two years of my life again when I could just concentrate on the best year of my life? So that's why, you know, I have ideas for music videos for many of the songs on Empire. I just don't care. <laughs> I've moved on from Empire. Um, I have healed from those years of my life and I just want to move on to the better things. So yeah, I'm sorry that answer. Wow. JCO. 2831 says, Hi, will you ever go on a tour around the US for tattoos? I love your work and I'd love to get a tattoo from you, but I live in Indiana and can't travel very far. Um, how about you write to your government and ask them to make it easier for people to get working visas? Because until that happens, the answer is no. I know a lot of tattoo artists that do it anyway without a visa, but I'm far too fucking paranoid for that shit and I don't want to get arrested in America. So, unfortunately, I did look into it, I was thinking about doing it, and then I was like, Nope. Either that or just make me really fucking famous and well-known because then I can get a visa. But until either of one of those things happens, it's not gonna happen. Um, Daniela Kenobi says, two questions. Do your previous partners or people in general question your asexuality because you had sexual partners? So that's question one. Um, no. Because people understand that you can be asexual and still have sex with people. There are asexuals that are sex positive. There are asexuals that have sex with people because they enjoy orgasms. Doesn't mean they're actually sexually attracted to that person. Um, I am not, I mean, sometimes I'm sex repulsed, but I'm not like, you know, a sex repulsed asexual. I'm just asexual. And if I love someone and they want to have sex, you know, I would be happy to share that experience with them. And I didn't realize, you know, I didn't figure it out until this year. So no one's really judging me for it, apart from the judgmental people. Um, but yeah, I am still good friends with my two most recent previous fuck buddies, which is hilarious as an asexual. And my most recent one, he and I have actually talked about it. And when I came out to him as asexual, he was like, yeah, that makes sense and then we're still friends. Um, and then my previous fuck buddy before him, it's hilarious saying fuck buddy, um, he and I are still friends and we still talk, but like we've never really talked about the asexual thing because we never talk about the fact that we used to bang. Because I think both of us don't care. Like both of us prefer each other as just platonic friends. Yeah, I feel like neither of us really got anything out of the sex anyway. Maybe he's asexual. Anyway, I am good friends with my two most recent former fuck buddies, and neither of them have given me shit for it. Have you given up on the Beauty and the Beast and or Star Wars tattoos? Yes. Yes, I have. Your videos help me a lot, love heart. The greatest compliment for me is knowing that I help people. When people message me and they say like that I help them, 
feel more comfortable in their skin or I help them, you know, come out of the closet or I help them just like love their bodies or, you know, pursue their dreams or cut out toxic people from their lives. Like that's the greatest compliment to me. Um, so whenever people send me that, it, it makes me really happy. Carly Fries 29 says top five things to draw slash tattoo, i.e. people, landscapes, animals. People, women, women's faces. That's my favorite. Um, it's Nikki says, do you reject cliche tattoos or ask people if you can make them more unique? It depends on what you mean by a cliche tattoo. I mean, if somebody wants something on their body, that's their choice, not mine. I'm not gonna tell them that it's a cliche tattoo. Like, I got basic bitch script on my ribs. I got a basic bitch fucking bird silhouette. I got basic bitch mountains and trees and a fucking basic bitch crescent moon. Like, I got me some basic bitch shit. I'm not gonna judge people for it. Like, whatever you want on your body is your decision. Kawaii Blackbird says, in all the places you have lived slash visited, which place did you like the most? And where would you want to live if you could live anywhere? Um, they're all great for different reasons and they're all, they all had, you know, bad things for different reasons. Um, I had kind of a shitty childhood in a psychological sense, but I had a very good childhood in a material sense. You know, I got to grow up and see the world, I got to experience so many different things, but at the same time, because we moved so often, I grew up very distant and very alone. Um, the only constant I had in my life was my family, and my family was not healthy. You know, my biological father was a horrible human being, he did not allow my mother to be a mother, so I didn't really have a mother. And my sister bullied me. <laughs> so, um, if anyone wonders why I love being alone, that's why. But, you know, I can think of good things from every country that I've lived in. And I can think of bad things, like bad memories from every country that I've lived in. Pretty much all it takes for me to feel comfortable in a country is me being able to do what I love. So at the moment, that's why I am in Vancouver and that's why I've stayed in Vancouver. Um, you know, A, I'm Canadian and have a Canadian passport so that just makes my life easy. B, I can do my music here. C, I can act here because there's an industry in Vancouver. D, is that where we are with the letters? Um, I can tattoo here, I can do my work here. The, I prefer the tattoo industry here versus Australia. Um, although technically I've left the industry anyway because I opened a private studio. Because I like being alone. Um, if I could live anywhere, I'd stay here for now. I'm a big fan of Vancouver, but I'm, I also want to travel a lot. You know, I'm not gonna pick a country that I've never actually visited because I don't know what it's like. Um, Zobug says, what are some goals you achieved this year? This year, I... I did a lot this year. <laughs> I cut out people that I needed to cut out. I split up the band. I went solo again. I released another solo album. I recorded a second solo album, but it's not gonna be released until next year because BASE! Um... <laughs> what else did I do? I opened a private studio. That was sick. I received Batok, and I got closer to my ancestors, which was fucking sick. Um, what else have I done this year? I've done a lot this year. I kicked out my shitty roommates. I enjoyed the summer. I actually went to the beach a bunch, which is something that I've been wanting to do previously and just like didn't because I was too busy working or whatever. Um, what else? I've had some really cool, like, spiritual, supernatural shit happen, but... I don't really feel comfortable talking about that on camera. I feel like that's more between me and them. So I don't really want to openly share that. Um... Yeah. Pretty much my goal into going into 2018 was to take care of myself and to stop putting other people before myself. That was, you know, I didn't have a list of goals. That was just the one thing. It was be more of an asshole. That was my New Year's resolution. 
and I was more of an asshole and I put myself above all others and it has been the best year of my life. So, you know, goal cheat. Um, what are some of your goals for next year? Next year I am going to teach myself a new language or two. I have already started. For a long time I had this thing in my head that I just couldn't learn languages. Um, but then I was, I, my friend Chelsea, who I used to work with, I was tattooing her, and she is currently studying French and Spanish at school, and I was like, well, that's fucking cool, like, I wish I could speak a language, like, man, I've lived in all these different countries, and yet I can still barely speak English, I feel useless, like, when I go to the Chinese market just down there, and I see all these people speaking to each other, I'm like, I lived in Singapore for fucking seven years and I still don't know anything that these people are saying. And that makes me ashamed that I didn't, like, assimilate well enough into any of the countries that I lived in. Um, which is another, you know, isolating thing from my childhood, despite the fact that I lived in so many different countries. I was never local. I was always still, you know, an expat, an immigrant. I was still a foreigner. Um, but yeah, so then I saw that my friend was learning French and Spanish at the same time, um, going to a school for it, but schools freak me out, I can't do classes, I can't do lessons, I can't do teachers, I've had too much psychological trauma from my childhood. Um, but then I started getting into BTS and then, you know, found out that RM taught himself how to speak English from watching Friends, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna teach myself a fucking language, because as I said earlier in this video, I have a thing where if I see that someone else has done something, I'm like, I can do it too. So, yeah. I decided I was gonna teach myself a language, and I have started. I'm currently working on two languages, and it's actually been going pretty well. I don't like talking about things before I've done them, I only like talking about things once I've done them, which is why I'm not really saying which languages. But, yeah, that's something I'm going to do into 2019. I'm going to keep up teaching myself these languages. I don't have to be fluent by the end of the year, but as long as I actively keep learning them, I will be proud of myself. Even if I can't speak fluently, just being able to listen and understand a conversation, that's going to be enough for me as a start. Because, you know, it's nice to be more than just... English speaking. See, I can't even speak English. Um, what are some tips other than watching documentaries to inspire others to become vegan? I can't help you there because I literally did nothing to become vegan. I just decided that I was going to be vegan and I went vegan and I stayed vegan. If you want to be vegan, you will go vegan. If you want to stop supporting animal cruelty, you will stop supporting animal cruelty. Um, I guess some tips would be just like cook, you know, find some recipes that you like and make sure you find food that you actually enjoy eating. You know, find yourself a chili pepper house, cause I'm set for life now. <laughs> um, another thing would be follow some vegan pages on Instagram, especially like the funny meme pages, because if you can laugh at the people that are trying to guilt you out of being vegan, it'll help you stay vegan. I feel like a lot of us have to deal with friends or family talking shit. If you have a meme page where you can like laugh at non-vegans with other vegans, it'll probably help you. Not Alex K. Thanks says, how did you decide which dreams are childhood dreams that should die and which ones are worth pursuing? You just need to figure out whether or not it's good for your soul. The whole mind, body, heart, and soul thing. Just like write it down. Write down on a piece of paper, you know, brain, body, heart, and soul, and write down your different dreams and which category they are working towards fulfilling. You know, is, is this dream going to make your brain happy? Is this dream going to make your body happy? Is this dream going to make your heart happy? Or is this dream going to make your soul happy? And they can like, you know, they can overlap. I feel like if there are any dreams that are not actually making your soul happy, if there are dreams that are actively making your soul sad, those are the ones you need to get rid of. You know, music makes my soul happy. Being in a band made my soul want to fucking kill itself. Um, you know, Ezek is 
a huge part of who I am, and you know, writing a Zeke and making that happen is a huge chunk of what I need to do before I die. Like, pretty much whenever anybody asks me about death, I'm like, once I finish a Zeke, I can fucking die. Like, I'm not afraid of death, I'm afraid of dying before I finish making a Zeke. <laughs> um, but writing a Zeke is a book that was like ruining my life. And so the moment I was just like, fuck the books, I wanted to see it on screen anyway, and I started writing a screenplays, that's good for me. So, if it's good for your soul, it's a good dream. If it's bad for your soul, it can fuck off. Would you ever bring your side cut back? I mean, I don't think I would want it again, but if I, you know, was, if I landed a role that wanted me to have a side cut, sure. If I landed a role that wanted me to shave my head, I'd be so fucking down for it. But... I also like having long hair. Pretty much, I would be down for shaving my head, but I'm not gonna do it unless it's like, for a roll. <laughs> um, also kind of personal, but how did you blend cultures when you were married? We didn't! And that's why we're not married. Well, I mean, it's one of the many reasons why we weren't married. I just really did not enjoy his culture. Um, not all Australians, but many Australians are racist as fuck, and a lot of them are very misogynistic. Like, a lot of the women feed into the misogynist culture as well, which was just disgusting to be around. Um, I don't know. My ex's family wasn't very great to him either, and I'm not a fan of people that are abusive to their family members. I just, there was nothing about his personal culture that I wanted to be a part of. And then whenever I talked about my upbringing and being a third culture kid, he would like roll his eyes and think that I was being an asshole and that I viewed myself as higher than him and his culture because you know, whatever. So we obviously, we just didn't want to be a part of each other's lives. I'm asking because my fiance is Hmong. I don't know what that is. And I am not, and we, meaning his family and I, are struggling with it because I don't act like Hmong wife should. I don't even know what the fuck Hmong is. I feel so uncultured. Um, yeah. I don't know, if you love each other and you care about each other, whatever kind of assimilation is going to happen, but don't force yourself to be something that you are not. Especially if it's his, like, dad or his family that's upset about it. If he personally wants you to, like, do something, that's one thing. Um, but if his family is the one that's like, yeah, you're not fucking, like, mom enough, they can go fuck themselves. Um, don't worry about them. A lot of people don't get along with their in-laws anyway, so, you know, just do whatever feels right and don't force yourself. So my battery just ran out and the camera shut off. Oh Jesus fucking Christ, this battery's low too. Okay, well there's a chance that the entire previous chunk of video just got lost because when my camera shuts off, it likes to delete files, so there's a chance that we just lost like half of the questions, that's fun. Fuck! Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue with the questions because I don't know how many of those were just lost. Fuck. <sighs> Are you ever going to come up with merch? Like, adios motherfuckers on a shirt or something because I'd buy that. Yes, I've been meaning to make, like, proper merch. I've just been so busy. Um, so put your ideas below. Like, what do you want to see on a shirt? Because it gets hard because I do so many different things. Like, do I make just, like, shirts with words on them? Or, like, do you want, like, my face on a shirt? I, like, I don't, do you want, like, me making stupid faces on a shirt? Or, like, do you want me actually looking hot on a shirt? I don't know. I should make a shirt with me looking hot with the words, do you want me looking hot on a shirt? <laughs> anyway. How did you and Romeo meet and become friends? I'm here for the platonic friendships because that's just so important, if not more important than romance. And also, are y'all gonna collab on a song or do more videos together? Um, Romeo and I met in the waiting room for an audition a couple years ago. Um, I think it was actually for Altered Carbon, which is now on Netflix, 
We were auditioning for the role of a tattoo artist, and they wanted real tattoo artists, but once I read the sides, which is like the script, the portion of the script that you're given for the audition, it wasn't actually a tattoo artist. I haven't seen the show, I tried watching it and I couldn't really get into it. I don't even know if the scene is on the show, but the scene we were auditioning for, um, this person just gets like a chip inserted into their brain or something, and that's what we were auditioning for, and neither of us got it. But we were in the waiting room, and normally I don't really talk to people, and normally Romeo doesn't really talk to people in the waiting room. But there was this older guy that was just like super chatty, and so he started asking me about my tattoos, and I mentioned that I had done quite a few of them myself. So when Romeo heard that, he was like, oh, whoa, what the fuck? And so he looked over and was looking at my tattoos and was like, whoa! And so we started talking, and then we just like exchanged information, and we followed each other on like Instagram and Facebook. And then we didn't really talk. Um, but then, I just like... There was some shit happening with my shop that I was working at, so I just decided to stop by his shop and pass by and just say hi and ask some things about his career because Romeo had opened his own private studio. And so like we just got talking from that and then I was like, hey, do you want to come down to Seattle with me? There's going to be the, uh, I think it's called the Pakdidawang Festival, which is like a Filipino festival because we're both from the Philippines. And I was like, and there's gonna be Lane Wilkin, and Romeo was like, what the fuck, I've got his books, and I was like, fucking me too! So, I don't know, we bonded over tattoos and, like, the Philippines, and then we went down to Seattle, and we've just been homies. Um, are we gonna make music? We have very different music styles. And the funny thing is, we've hung out a lot, and never once have we actually talked about doing music together. We just, I don't know. I think it's because Romeo knows I'm like, really, I just can't work with people. Um, are we gonna make more videos? I was in one of his music videos, but it was kind of awkward because the other guys were kind of weird. Um, and Romeo was going to be in one of my music videos. I was gonna make like a funny music video for Here's a Happy Song from Empire, but now I like hate that album. So I, I don't know what's gonna happen with that. Um. I also think it's really cool that you're both finding connections to the culture of your people pre-colonization as someone from an island that was also colonized by the Spanish. I can completely relate and have been getting ink that ties to my Taino roots as well, and I think it's inspiring to see both of you get your batok. Fuck yeah! Decolonize, indigenize. Um, the Philippines was such a beautiful country before the Spanish, and it's still a beautiful country, but it's lost so much of its original culture and a lot of Filipinos are still actively trying to erase the original culture like you bring up Batok and they don't want to hear about it you bring up you know any of the pre-Spanish cultures and they like don't want to talk about it and I've had experience with Filipinos bashing me for trying to bring back these cultures they're like oh fake Filipino you're just trying to be Hawaiian like this culture is from the Philippines. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Um, Natasha Rebecca says, Has a love interest creeped at all into your life? Um, no. No. Um, I am very career driven and I'm very career focused. And pretty much don't ask me about relationships until I finished making a Zeke, because until then, like, I'm off. I'm off the market. So um, I might not ever get to if if I never get to make a Zeke. Like, let's make it happen. Y'all want to ship me with someone? Let's make a Zeke. Um, Katie Wolf 24 says, did the stomach tattoo hurt? Yep. Especially in the belly button. Belly button go fuck itself. That hurt like a woo. Not Alex K. Thanks. This last question. Since your hair is wavy slash curly type pattern, when it's shorter, do you plan on cutting layers into it now? Oh. Oh. Since your hair is a wavy curly type pattern when it's shorter, do you plan on cutting the layers into it now to let your curls form better, or are you cool with the length, kind of straightening it out a bit more via the weight? Um, I don't know. I keep my hair in a bun a lot. I mostly keep my hair up in that bun, and so when I take it out of the bun, it has more waves, because I 
you know, curl it in the bun. And then over time it just kind of does this. Um, mostly I'm okay with whatever it's doing because I hate hairdressers and I don't trust them and I can't be bothered doing it myself, so. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna grow it till it's like down to my knees and then chop off half of it and donate it and then I'll just keep doing that. Georgia, not MDG, says, how do you deal with anxiety? Um, I do what I can to make myself not be in positions where I'm gonna be anxious. So, if I get invited to a friend's birthday party and the friend, the birthday friend, is the only friend I actually know that's going to be at that birthday party, I could either go there and be anxious the whole time, or I could just not go, which is what I did. I messaged my friend and I was like, hey Chad, happy birthday, hope you have a great day, I just like can't really be around people that I don't really know, like my anxiety is just through the roof right now. And he was like, I completely understand, have a good night, thank you for the birthday wishes. If you have good friends, they will understand. And you know, just, just be honest. Um, obviously whenever I go to an audition, it's not like I cannot go to the audition, because then I don't get to audition. I fucking hate auditions, and my anxiety just goes through the roof. Um, in those cases, I just try to act through the anxiety. Um, normally it... Sometimes it works. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Jayanna says, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I don't like thinking about that, that freaks me out. Uh, two, what's your favorite tattoo that you've designed? I have a lot. <laughs> What's your favorite swear word? I feel like fuck is my go-to. I say fuck a lot. Um, and then, love you, Naomi. I've been watching your, since the beginning with your hair videos. Oh, thanks. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Amy Louise Forsyth says, If today was your last day on Earth, would you be content with your life, and would you do anything different? Yes, in all senses, apart from a Zeke. Need to get a Zeke done. Until then, I can't die. Um, Arlene Flores says, any new recipes we might see soon? No, because I don't cook. I just, there's just, it's just not worth it for me to buy groceries. It's like a waste of money when I buy groceries, they just go off. Um, Glitter Picks a Unicorn, oh no, that's not a question. Shadow Porker says, if and when you go live taking song requests, do you know what I will request every time? Any idea when we will see part two? Oh, are you talking about Man Overboard and Siren? I was gonna say One Step Below because I know that people always request that. It's either One Step Below, um, Lone Wolf, people request a lot. Um, people don't usually request Feed Me Acid despite the fact that it's like a lot of people's favorites. I think for acoustic, people like One Step Below, Lone Wolf, and I think you were talking about Man Overboard. And if you were asking about Man Overboard Part 2, because there is a sequel kind of to that song. That song is called Sirens and it is on the next album, Soelu, which is going to be released early 2019 before I go to the Philippines. Before I, If I don't release it before I go to the Philippines, I won't have to go to the Philippines. Teddy? Hey. Ah! Fabs are good. Dark Miss Mustache says, How are you? I'm fucking sweet. Do you plan on remaking some of your first albums? I will one day. Like, I get better at making my albums the more I do them. I think the reason why Empire sounded so shit was because I hadn't made an album for two years, right? So, like, I was gone from doing that for two years, and then Empire was my first album coming back from my hiatus, which is why I kind of like forgot how to do it, and that's why it sounds so bad. Um, so yes, I will re-record everything, but I'm, you know, when I have time. And, you know, I'm better. Venus Nefelibata says, what are three things you are grateful for? Um, my dogs. My body, 
this vessel has been through so much and it has so much PTSD from all the trauma, but it still enables me to do what I love. I am so grateful for this vessel because I can draw because it works. I can write my music and record my music and I can sing my music because my vessel allows me to do so. I can dance and I can stretch and you know, I can go places with my dogs because my body allows me to do so and I'm very grateful for that. And I finally stopped, you know, looking at my body with disgust as the media taught me to do so. Um, I think once you start looking at your body as separate from who you actually are, it helps you love your body a lot more. When you start looking at it as a separate entity, like, your body is your house. It is what you live inside of. It is not who you are. Who you are is separate. Your body is what you are inside of. And it enables you to do the things that you can do. And we need to take care of our bodies, you know? Um, yeah, so my dogs, my body, because it enables me to do everything that I love. Um, can I be grateful for, like, my resilience? I am grateful that I am... There is just something about me, like my soul, my personality, just like me as an entity. I have always been so resilient. I feel like I've known a lot of people who have been through the same things that I have been through. And they are still broken. And a lot of these people I don't know, it's like they're happy being broken and they're content being miserable. I'm glad that I have been through so much and I have not allowed it to ruin my life. You know, I don't want to take away from these people that have been through all of these things, but I'm, I'm thinking of specific people from my life um, that have had the same hardships that I've had, but, you know, they let it ruin them. And I'm so grateful that something inside me just keeps me going. Like, I've just been so driven. Even when I was younger and I was suicidal and I wanted to kill myself, I was like, need to record this album and then I can kill myself. And then it was, uh, I just need to finish writing a Zeke and then I can kill myself. And I mean, if anything, I'm still kind of there. I don't want to kill myself anymore, but it's more like, you can't kill me until I finish a Zeke. Maybe all this will change and I make a Zeke. I mean, I doubt it, but you know. Um, was I answering your question? Oh, okay. Grateful things. And then three things you can't live without. Well, I mean, those three things, right? Are we talking about material things? I couldn't live without the internet. I make my living off of the internet. And I'm not just talking about YouTube. There's YouTube, there is my music, there is my tattoos. Every single tattoo that I have, I have booked through the internet, whether it's Instagram or people email me through my website or they see a video on YouTube. Like, I can't, could not do what I do if it was not for the internet and I am so grateful for the internet. I can do all of this stuff in the comfort of my home. Bedroom records, motherfucker. Fuck yeah, internet. Um, so I could not live without the internet. I could not live without food. Like, let's be honest, I fucking love food. Um, I love eating. I love the act of eating. And I think my love for eating is what makes me accidentally healthy. I don't eat healthy to be healthy. I eat healthy because I like eating. Allow me to explain. Um, like, heavy carbs. You know, like, eating a lot of heavy carbs aren't that good for you. They're good for you, but... It's more so, you get full eating he heavy carbs, so you don't get enough nutrients because like, you just fill up on this thing. Whereas if you eat mostly like vegetables and fruits and like, you know, tofu, beans, and seitan, seitan, or whatever, that gives you so much more nutrients versus bread or rice and like heavy carbs. And so I end up accidentally eating that way, eating healthy, purely because not for the health reasons. I end up eating healthy because carbs make me full and I don't want to be full. I want to be able to keep on eating 
for hours. I love just sitting in bed, watching stuff, and like eating. The act of eating, putting yummy things in my mouth and chewing them and swallowing them, that makes me so happy. And so I purposefully will not eat heavy carbs with my food because I love eating so much. <laughs> like I'll usually eat a bit of rice or like noodles or whatever, but like I just, I love eating. I don't want to be full. Where did I get, where, how did I get here? Oh, uh, what else can I live without? Um, my dogs, Bailey. As you have seen from my videos, is absolutely 100% my savior. <laughs> she is my support animal. And I, you know, I don't think I could be here without her. After all the shit was falling apart in Australia, I was suicidal. And I was actually staring at my kitchen knife. Like, my big fucking kitchen knife, and I would have done it if it wasn't for my dogs. More, so, It wasn't so much they were comforting me and making me feel better, it was more so, who the fuck is gonna take care of my dogs if I kill myself? Fuck, I have to stay alive and take care of these good <laughs> dogs. But, you know, either way, I didn't stab myself in the guts like I had been thinking about. Um, what is something you'd wish everyone could have or experience? Inner peace. Just that absolute happiness. It is, it's such an amazing feeling. For anyone that's ever done cocaine, it feels like that minus the heart thundering. Um, fun fact, I've done coke. One of my old fuck buddies was a bit of a cokehead. Um, and I, I remember the first time I did it, I just laughed because I looked at him and how much he depended on this drug to feel good and I looked at everyone else that I had heard about having an addiction to this drug and I just I kind of laughed to myself because it wasn't that great because the cocaine high that people are so addicted to I had felt sober I had already felt that and I had felt that from being peaceful and from being at peace and yeah I don't know I did quite a bit of coke over about two months I'd say I was doing it every couple days just because I was keeping up with my friend um, but then I just got bored of it and I got sick of it and I got sick of like how he was a cranky bitch pretty much all it did for me was it kept me awake so after a while I was like okay you know what you snort the coke I'm just gonna have an energy drink and we were on the exact same level the whole night we were just like talking about stuff until 8 in the morning. I never went out and partied. Whenever we did it, we would just stay at home and like, just talk. And so, I don't know, it was like he needed cocaine. And all I needed was an energy drink. Because I'm, I'm an empath and I can, I just, I vibe on people's levels. And so, that's why like, I can hang out with a bunch of drunk people and they think I'm drunk. And I'm like, nah man, I'm just having a good time. And I can hang out with a bunch of stoners and they think I'm stoned. And I'm like, nah dude, I'm just having a good time. Um, but yeah, anyway, inner peace. Don't do cocaine. If you are not at peace, do not do drugs. Because it will give you a high, it will make you happy, but it will be temporary. And if you have an addictive personality, you will get addicted to that and you will absolutely fuck up your life. But, if you are at peace, and you try a drug like cocaine, you're probably just gonna be like, that's it. Um, so yes, I do believe that inner peace and inner happiness is, you know, it's such an amazing feeling. Do not go looking for it through synthetic means, please. Please don't watch this and think like, oh, I should try cocaine. Like, don't fucking, it's not that great. Especially now with all the fentanyl. It, I know it's different for different countries, but in Canada right now, like, don't even fucking bother. You're just gonna OD on fentanyl and die. Um, for people wondering, I do not drink, smoke, or do drugs. I'm not strict straight edge. I thought I was for a while and until I realized that straight edge people are, a lot of them are fucking assholes. Pretty much, I started partying young, and by that I mean drinking, and then I got over it. And then I was sober for like seven or eight years. And I reached a point where I was like, if I feel like drinking or doing drugs, I'm gonna do it. 
I just don't feel like it. And so I just didn't do anything for about seven or eight years. And then last year I started partying hard. No, no, no. The year before that was when I had the fuck buddy who I fell in love with and he had a bit of a coke habit. And so I was like, I'll try it. And that's how I ended up trying it. Um, and then I got over it and I moved on with my life. I haven't done any of that since then. Um, and then last year I started partying again, and by that I just mean drinking, and I started, like, drinking. But it was because I was fucking miserable, and I was just, like, trying to get along with these people that I wanted to be friends with that depended on alcohol to have a good time. And then I got over it, because that sucks. Why would I want to be friends with someone that has to be drunk in order to be my friend? Like, fuck that. That was why I quit drinking in the first place. So, yeah, I'm back to, you know, maybe I'll be sober for another seven or eight years. I'm not, you know, straight edge. I'm not strict. If I feel like drinking, I will have a drink. I just don't feel like drinking. I don't think I've had a drink in about a year. No, wait. Last drink I had... Oh. The last time I drank, it was the night I... It was the night... The band blew up, essentially. It wasn't even my bandmates I was hanging out with. I was hanging out with uh, one of their girlfriends and, oh, she turned out to be, woo! Anyway, that was the last time I had a drink. After that, I was like, fuck this. I A, don't like the taste of alcohol. It tastes like absolute shit. B, don't like the way it feels. And C, don't like the fact that I'm only drinking because I'm hanging out with people that require alcohol in order to have fun. How did I get here? Oh my God, I'm sorry. I think I have ADD, guys. I've been like, so many people I know with ADD are like, you have fucking ADD. Um, yes. I want everyone to experience inner peace. Don't do drugs. <laughs> That's the gist of that question. I'm sorry. Um, comfortably numb, spelt with like zeros and X's. How did all of your projects that didn't pan out the way you had envisioned this year affect your mental health? I think we should all have goals, but if... I'm so, like, OCD about some things. There are some things where if they go wrong, I will have a mental breakdown. But there are also a lot of things that I... I don't know, it's like I have to do them, but at the same time I don't care? Maybe that's my inner resilient thing happening again? But it's like... I don't know, I can work on an album and expect it to sound one way, and then the more I work on it, it just sounds different, and I'm okay with that. Um, apart from Empire, because that sounds like dog shit, but anyway. Do you feel like you learned something about being a part of a group? Yes. If you're talking about the band, I learned that I should not be in a band. Um, Maria the Master says, do you want kids in the future? Um, ask me that in like 20 years. Uh, have you ever had your wisdom teeth removed? I guess they're still in there, I don't know, nothing's bothered me. What's something 2018 has taught you? 2018 has taught me to trust my gut always. Um, and, you know, keep up with the whole cutting shitty people out thing and putting yourself above all others. Here's the thing with the gut, um, for a long time, I was allowing shitty people to enter my life because I was trying not to judge them based off of first impressions. Because I was like, oh, I shouldn't judge somebody based off the way that they appear. When in reality, I wasn't judging them off the way that they looked because that's not what your gut judges. Your gut judges people based off the way that they feel. And if somebody feels wrong, the moment that you meet them, it's because they are. It's not based off the way that they look. It's not based, it's, it's not you judging them off of their appearance. That is purely your instincts feeling that they are wrong for you and you should trust that. Um, what's a piece of advice you wish you told your younger self? I've answered this before and my answer is always, I don't think I would say anything. Yeah, you know, everything that I've been through got me to where I am today, and I am proud of who I am today and where I am today. Therefore, you know, younger me can handle it. 
There's a lot of shit that younger me is gonna have to go through and it's gonna be hard. But, you know, Kate can handle it. Although I would tell myself to be nicer to my mother. That's the only thing. I was, my sister and I were trained by our biological father to treat our mother like garbage. And we did. That's the only thing I would tell myself. Obviously I'm aware of it now and so I actively don't treat my mother like garbage now, but that's what we were taught. Um, Misty Tina 99 says, will you ever co color your hair fun funky colors again? If I feel like it. An artist, oh fuck, I can't read. An introvert artist says, one, do you like cats? Already right, answer that question. Are you okay with me drawing you? Um, absolutely, go for it. I love drawings. Three, any advice for making digital art? Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. I remember when I first got my stylus and I plugged into the computer, learning how to draw with that was a mind fuck, but now it's, you know, it's like second nature. Um, Le Juan... Le Juan... Uh, Le Juan Ani. Le Juan Ani. I'm sorry if that's wrong. You're a beautiful person inside and out. Thank you. You've helped me through a lot in my life and you don't even know it. Thank you. Thank you for being such an amazing person. Thank you. Um, and your mushroom nuggets and asparagus fries are too freaking good. It's been years since I have made those. I should make those again. Fuck. Yeah, I should make those mushroom nuggets. I remember those were good. Um, Bella Wella 96 says, what happened to the dog that you have a tattoo of? Don't hear you talk about him much. He was so cute. This is a tattoo of Kyartan that I still need to fix because it wasn't done right. And he was our family dog. We got him when he was a puppy when I was about nine. And he was my best friend. And he was basically... The way you see Bailey interact with me in my videos is he was there first. Kyartan was my savior that got me through all the shit I was going through as a kid. I'm gonna cry. And as a teenager. And then I left. I know it wasn't my fault because I was like a teenager and I was just moving to pursue my dreams and move on with my life and it wasn't my responsibility to take care of him but obviously I'm still guilty about it I left him behind my biological father who of course did not want to take care of him despite the fact that he was our family dog he wasn't my dog he was our family dog and then uh, he ended up rehoming him because he didn't want to take care of him, which sucks. But, you know, I'm glad that Keratin got to spend the like, yeah, last years of his life with a family that was actually there for him. Hey, Bailey. Oh, God, you're always on point. You're always so on point with this. Keratin used to be there for me. Just like Bailey is, always. And I feel so guilty. We weren't ready to have a dog, you know? My sister and I were kids. As much as your kids beg you for an animal, don't fucking get one unless you as a parent are willing to take care of it, you know? Um, so yeah, when we got him, we were living in Holland, and Holland is a great place for dogs. And we were there for a year. And then we moved to India, which was even better for him, because we had a huge house with a huge yard. And then we moved to Singapore. And he had to spend the majority of his life living in a tiny apartment with people that weren't willing to take him, you know, running or... Singapore just like didn't have any dog parks and if they did I didn't fucking know about them. I was a kid. It's not like I could take him. We didn't have a car So it's not like we could take him anywhere I started running with him after I graduated high school. I started running with him every single day And then I got tendonitis in my knee and I couldn't fucking run anymore And then I moved to Australia and I left him behind
and I know it's not my fault, and I know it wasn't my responsibility to take care of him, but it still feels like I abandoned him. On the same hand, on the same time though, like, my mom and my sister were still living in Singapore at the time, and neither of them took him either, so I'm not as guilty as they are. But I still feel like I should have worked harder in Australia and brought him over. <sighs> he deserved the life that I now provide for these guys. He deserved that. He deserved to go to the park every morning and play fetch for an hour. <sighs> he deserves so much more than we gave him. And I am glad that he was rehomed with a family that actually got to give that to him. You know, it just makes me feel like shit that I wasn't the one that got to give it to him. So, that's Keratog. I got this tattoo when I was living in Australia because I wasn't with him anymore and I felt guilty about the fact that I wasn't with him anymore. I had been planning on getting him tattooed long before that anyway, but shortly after I got the tattoo, that was when he was rehomed. He wasn't my dog anymore. And he passed away last year. And um, Keratin always used to sleep on my bed. So I say he was my family dog, but in the family, he was my best friend and I was his. Like, he was my dog. Um, and he used to sleep in my bed and my last years of high school when I was living with just my mother, it was me, my mom, and Keratan. And I had a bunk bed. I had a loft bed with my desk underneath. And I didn't sleep in my bed. I slept on the couch so that I could sleep with Keratan. That was how much I loved him. I didn't sleep on my bed for like two years. Because I wanted to sleep on the couch with my dog. And he was always either on my bed or under my bed. And then I got these guys. And they have a weird thing where they can sleep on the bed, but the moment I'm in the bed, they can't be on the bed. And I don't know, my sister posted a, a drawing she did of Giratin after he passed, and I just left the comment, sometimes I get the feeling that Bailey and Teddy can't sleep on the bed when I'm in it because there's already another dog there. And, um, she didn't reply. So I thought she thought I was, you know, being a twit. But then, for Christmas, she drew a fucking picture that I will post right here. And I hadn't been expecting it. And I woke up on the 24th, because that was the 25th in Singapore, because of time differences. I woke up Christmas Eve day and looked at my phone and I, I took one glance at the drawing and I fucking cried. <laughs> I am talking like ugly sobbing. I was like <laughs> sobbing. All morning. Like, you can- I'm not even sobbing now. I'm just, like, ugly crying right now. But that day, it was, like, hideous, ugly sobbing. Because as much as I like to remind myself that it was not my responsibility as a kid, as, an, as a teenager, you know, I still can't help feel guilty. And I wasn't there for him like he was there for me. Keratin and I had a really, really strong bond. He was like Bailey. I feel like the two of them really would have loved each other. She reminds me of him so much. Ugh. Oh. 
you can tell I've been getting more honest in all these videos because I've been crying in every single fucking one. When I used to be battling all my inner demons, he would be there for me. And, you know, many, many years ago, before I even knew what borderline personality disorder was, and let alone that I had it, I remember I was in my room talking to my friends on MSN, and something happened that just like instantly fucking triggered me and got me so upset. And it was like my world was crashing down around me. And Kiratan just got up from the other room, came into my room, laid down at my feet, and curled his little tail around my ankle. And he just laid there until it was all over. And then he just got up and left. That was, he just knew. And, um, <laughs> there was one time my biological father was just being a jerk, as per usual, and Keratin came into my room and I was just talking to him, as I did. And I was like, Keratin, can you just go pee on his favorite rug? Like, fuck that guy, that guy sucks. And Keratin never had accidents in the house. Never. Next thing I know, Keratin gets up, leaves the room, and I'm like, okay. And I'm just on my computer, and then I hear my biological father, like, screaming. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then he starts screaming at Keratin, and he's like, Fucking Keratin just pissed on my rug! Like, his $600 fucking, like, Turkish rug or whatever, that, you know, Keratin has never had an accident inside the house. And I told him to piss on his favorite rug, and Kiriton went and pissed on the most expensive rug in the house. Like, he and I, we were... Are you gonna go bark at the neighbors now? Anyway, that was the story of Kiriton. Please don't knock over my camera, Bubba. Don't knock over- thank you, thank you. Okay. Ugh! Tears! Melina Shukri says, How's the screenplay writing going? Is it going to be animated? Are you for a movie or series? Um, it's going good. I am almost done writing season one, so you can guess from that it's gonna be a series, not a movie, because there's far too much happening to try and moveify that. Is it gonna be animated? Um, Originally I was thinking of having everything done CGI because I love game animatics. So if it could be done like that well, yes. Plus like there's so much magic and shit happening in it. I feel like if it was filmed live action there'd be so much work done in post it would almost be easier just to do the entire thing animated anyway. Ugh. Fuck. Okay. God. Tears. Let's go to Facebook. Ugh. Ugh my voice is weird now. <laughs> Will you be releasing your music on CD form for us non-tech savvy people? I'm so desperate for an I Hope You Die CD. No. Because there's so many materials in the process and I, I don't know, I feel like it's so wasteful. Just go digital. <laughs> A lot of people have a favorite fan universe they'd love to be in. Harry Potter, Marvel, Lord of the Rings, Legend of Zelda, Zelda, etc. If you could pop in and out of, at will of these worlds to witness parts of the story, what stories or universes would you visit? Oh, like in a, like a real... Um... I'd love to visit parts of Middle-earth. I feel like the Shire would be fun, and like any of the elvish cities would be fun, but there's so much suffering in that world. Marvel, I'd be super down to visit the Marvel Universe if I had superpowers. Obviously I don't, so, well, I mean, do I? Um, yeah, what else? Um, I'm a big fan of Pandora from the Avatar world, because it reminds me of some of the water Azik cities in Azik. Okay. Uh, okay, 
Marie, sorry, the first person, oh, just, fuck. Did I say? The last question was from Justine. Um, Marie says, because you, no. Marie says, ever thought about moving somewhere? What country slash state would it be? Um, I haven't really thought about moving, but I'm down to visit. Amber says, do you have a favorite song you've written? No. It changes depending on mood, and a lot of the times I'll forget about songs, and then I'll hear them and be like, fuck yeah, this is sick. So there's no specific favorite song. John says, how long did it take to film the music videos, and how long did it take to write the album? What was the overall theme of the album? What did it mean to you? As I said earlier, it Empire was the, you know, two years of suffering, essentially. And that's why it's so angry sounding. And sad. And full of so much anguish and turmoil. Um, the songs were written over... I don't know, it was like, the overall mood was the last two years, the 2016 and 2017, but most of those songs were written within a couple of months. It, most of those were written towards the end of me working with the band, because I was already planning on recording them solo anyway. Um, and then a few of them were written as I was recording the album. Kyle says, I first discovered you through YouTube and all the original albums I can't talk, my sinuses are all clogged from crying. Um, huh. I first discovered you through YouTube and all the original albums you released on Bandcamp. How did you manage to write and record so frequently and what inspired you to do so? I managed to write a lot just because that's what happens. Um, music is just how I deal with things and um, I have a lot of feelings. And if I didn't have music to get me through them, I would have died a long time ago. Um, and what it enabled me to record them was the fact that I am privileged and I come from privilege and I had access to recording equipment and I had the means to do so. Um, I think it is very important to stress the fact that I grew up with money. I came from a family that was very well off. Not anymore because I cut out my biological father, but I grew up with money. I grew up with access to music lessons, instruments, and recording equipment. Um, my biological father actually bought microphones and recording equipment so that he could record us as children and make albums and ship them off to his family, his like sisters and brothers and shit, to show off his trophy family. I actually had this conversation with my aunts and uncles the other day and we were laughing about it. Um, so yeah, if you look it up, those albums are actually online. If you look up Naomi S. King, um, you will probably find them. There are recordings of me playing like violin and piano and shit as a kid. He used to record us so that he could show us off because we were his little trophy family and we were only obviously allowed to play the songs that he wanted us to play and yada yada yada. So years later when I was like, I'm gonna record my own music, I already had access to these things. So you know, I took advantage of him being a little shit. And I was like, well, fucking show off your trophy family? I'ma sing songs about you, bitch. <laughs> so, I wrote a lot because that's just what I do, and I recorded a lot because I was privileged and I had access to being able to record a lot. Um, like, please do not compare yourself to me if you're like, oh wow, Yumi's doing a lot of stuff. I was privileged, and because I once was privileged, I am always going to be privileged, despite the fact that I cut him out of my life and I no longer have access to that, you know, pile of gold that he's just guarding. Um, the fact that I was raised with means to record myself obviously means that now as an adult, on my own, I have already experienced recording all these things and that's why I'm so able to do all these things. Also, I went to a really expensive, prestigious high school that taught me how to use programs such as Cubase, which is what I later bought to make my music. When you listen to my music now, the only instrument I am playing myself is guitar and piano for like the acoustic albums and for this album, because um, I bought a piano. Um, but yeah, any other instrument you hear 
is from this software that I use. And I did buy it myself. I paid my hardworking money for that. But I already knew of this software because I had been exposed to it at my rich ass high school. Oh, hi. <laughs> that had the means. So I, I was privileged. And because of that, I will always be privileged. So please don't feel bad if you don't have access to these kinds of things. Don't compare yourself to me. Um, because I was spoon-fed a lot of shit. And that's why I am I was able to do all of those things at such a young age. Don't let that stop you though. Just work hard. Fuck, my camera's running out of batteries again. Bailey, why do I talk so much? What spiritual practice do you follow? Also, can I see your elephant tattoo? I love elephants, they never forget. Um, I do not follow any spiritual practice. A lot of people have been asking me about my religion lately. Um, and I think it's because I've become so, like, peaceful. And everyone's like, what religion do you practice? And I'm like, fucking nothing, bitch. <laughs> I practice me, myself, and I. Um, I don't know. I like to believe in everything. And at the same time, nothing. But I, I like to believe in everything. I believe anyone should be able to believe anything, as long as they ain't hurting anyone. Like, who fucking cares? Rachel says, you inspire me so much. I love your attitude and realness. Thank you. Uh, my question is, what motivates you? What keeps you going when you want to quit? I watch your advice for when you feel like shit videos. Just curious if there was one specific drive that you always fall back to. Um, in high school, it was getting angry and this is one of my upcoming videos that i have in the queue um i i mentioned earlier in this video i just have this thing inside me that just like doesn't give up and is very res resilient but in order for me to get through shit my go-to is anger because anger is productive sadness is not you know, when I'm sad and I allow myself to be sad, I usually just curl up in bed and watch a movie and I'm just sad. But if I... Not so much anymore, but like definitely when I was going through some shit, getting angry is what got me through it. Don't get angry enough to hurt yourself or to hurt other people, but get angry enough to say fuck you to being sad. When you wake up and you're just sad, get angry enough to be like fuck that and fuck the people that are making me feel sad. Fuck you. Fuck everyone. I'm gonna fucking get through this. That's, that's my go-to. <laughs> but that's only when I'm upset. I think it's also important to release the, you know, anger. Like, stop being angry. When you've gotten through the thing that you had to be angry in order to get through. Once you've gotten through it, leave the anger behind. Don't let that follow you because then you're just gonna be angry. Please keep posting videos and art and music. Seriously, you cheer me up when I'm upset. Oh, it's the greatest compliment. I'm sorry my voice does this thing. It sounds really insincere. I just like, I, I mean it. Like that's the greatest compliment. I just, I'm fucking, I wasn't allowed to talk about my feelings as a child, okay? Patrick says, out of all your talents, which one do you want to see the most to- what? To see take off the most in the new year. I don't really mind. Whatever happens. Um, at this point, I feel like I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing, and then maybe at some point I might land some kind of acting gig that lets more people know that I exist, and then at that point it'll enable me to do more with- Cause like, I'm just doing music by myself now. Um, so ain't nothing gonna take off with that unless I just like magically become more well-known overnight and I feel like that will only happen if I land some like fucking role or whatever. But I'm not aiming for that, if that makes sense. It's more so I'm just gonna do what I do and... Yeah, I feel like setting goals like that is a bad thing. It's one thing to be like, oh, I want to write more music this year, or like, I'd like to release more music this year, that's one thing. But to be like, oh, I want my music to take off this year, that's not a good goal because that doesn't only involve you. The moment you say like, oh, I want this thing to take off, that involves other people and we have no control over other people. So I don't really give a fuck about things taking off, but you know, I just, I'm gonna do the things that I love. Amber says, what will be your next tattoo? Um, there's just a bunch that I'm currently working on. I don't really know 
My new, my next one that I'm not already working on is probably just gonna be some more like fucking, I don't know, Nordic runes up here. Just to start filling in this shitty sleeve that I've got going on. Caitlin says, what's your favorite color? Turquoise. Which you might under get. I mean, you might under get. You might, I was gonna say understand and then I was just gonna say get, but then I said under get. <laughs> my bad. See? Like, I can barely speak English. Maybe if I teach myself another language, I'll actually be more coherent. Skrink Ladoo says, I love your stuff and I love your positivity, but this is the internet. So I have to ask, how do you stay above the trolls and idiots on the internet? I have a humble small fan base on Instagram, but on occasion I come across people who just want to say the rudest things they can just to hurt your feelings. How do you deal with it slash ri rise above it slash tips? This is the perfect timing for that question. Um, so usually if somebody leaves a shitty comment, I will just immediately delete the comment and ban them from the page, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or whatever. Because I don't, like, I personally don't care enough to reply. And I also don't want my fans to reply because I don't want there to be, like, negativity. It's not so, it's not so much like, oh, I don't want my fans to reply to this person. It's more so I want to keep my pages a safe space for me and my fans. And I, you know, it's nice when they reply and like defend me or whatever, but at the same time, I don't want them to have to do that. You know, I want this to just be a nice, happy place. So I just delete and block instantly. It's very easy and I just do that. But the other day, somebody commented on my asexual video saying like, um, you're wearing a low cut top. I don't believe that you're asexual. So I was like, Okay, so I replied to that person because based off of, you know, their page and their icon, they seem to be a woman. And I was like, what I wear has nothing to do with my sexuality or sexual availability and implying that somebody is only wearing a low cut top because they want to have sex is actually, you know, feeding into the underlying layers of rape culture. And then this person just fucking like, there, there was no hope for this person and she just got worse and worse and worse with every comment so finally I just deleted and blocked <laughs> which is what I should have done from the get-go so I replied once and I was like oh god shouldn't have fucking done that so now you know I'm back to the whole instant delete instant block <coughs> Ugh. I need to eat something so yeah, it's it's easy enough for me to keep a, a lid on it right now because I'm not, you know, overly famous or whatever. I feel like maybe if I ever do take off, it might be harder. At which point, at which point I'll just hire someone to keep that shit off my page. Not because I, I'm like afraid of people talking negatively of me. I don't care. I personally don't give a fuck. It's more so I just want to keep my pages as like a safe space. You know, if you want negativity, go make a separate YouTube video about how much I suck. Like, if you want a video to bash me, make your own. Just like, you don't get to do it in my space. Also, the only reason why I replied to that person was because it wasn't just a personal insult. If somebody insults me, like, oh, your voice sucks, your music sucks, like, I don't fucking care. But this person was hereby dismissing any asexuals that are comfortable with their bodies and choose to wear anything revealing, which is why I was like, maybe I should reply to this one. Like, if it had just been about me, I wouldn't have cared. But that statement wasn't just about me. And so I replied and then I was like, oh, fuck this bitch. I should have just deleted and blocked in the first place. And then I did it. Okay, so that's all the questions from Instagram and Facebook. I don't think anybody sent any in from Twitter, which is fine, because this is probably going to be a two-hour video. I apologize. Um, thank you for sticking around, and thank you for being here with me. Um, I realize this is actually my tenth year on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for ten years as of September or something. I didn't even realize. Um, yeah, maybe I should. I'm gonna oh, make a video of me reacting to my old videos, because those are bad. So, if you've been with me for 10 years, thank you. I wouldn't have followed me 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much. 
Um, I love this like positive little tribe that we're building. And yes, I love you all so much. Thank you for enabling me to do the things that I love. Hearing that I help you is the best compliment I could ever receive. And it's, it, it's what keeps me going. Now, now that I'm not like angry anymore, when I feel sad and I doubt myself, I just think about you guys, which sounds really cheesy, but it's the fucking truth. Like when other people doubt me, I've had a lot of people in my real life kind of look down on what I'm doing, on like being an influencer, I hate that word, or like just being a YouTuber. When I have real life people look down on me for that, I just think about every single one of you that's messaged me and left a comment saying how much I've helped you. And it makes me believe in myself again. Because I have a lot of people that are trying to make me not believe in myself. It's fucking ridiculous. But like, you guys keep me going. Knowing that I help people is all that matters. And... Yeah. Really, you have something to say? Bailey. I bet some of the people that have seen these videos think I only have one dog. Cause you're the one that's always here. Teddy's just always on the floor barking at people, being a dick. Isn't that right, Ted? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys had a good 2018. Wow. And if not, you can make 2019 better. Just cut out all those shitty people that are holding you down. Um, yes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. I love you guys, I love my motherfuckers, and I love the fact that, um, yeah, you guys have named yourselves the motherfuckers, that's hilarious. I don't know if you know, but this happened on a live stream once, um, a couple of, like, the, the fans in the stream were talking about, like, oh, you should have a, you know, a name for your fan base, because that's a thing now. And then someone else was like, well, technically, aren't we the motherfuckers? Because at the end of every video, I say, adios motherfuckers. And then someone else was like, oh my god, we're the motherfuckers. And I was like, holy fuck, you're my motherfuckers. So, yeah. Thank you, all my beautiful little motherfuckers. <laughs> I love you so much. Mahalkita! Alright, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And until next time, till next year, probably. Adios, motherfuckers.